this is the Stormy Willow Podcast, a lighthearted, balanced examination of the paranormal. <laughs> Howdy do, welcome to our brood. I'm your host Adele, along with the little bitty Sarah, hey, aka baby. the birthday girl. Finally, I get the recognition I deserve and have been looking for, you know, for the entire month. So thank you for that. Yes, so we do have a birthday in the house this week on the 27th. <laughs> And I will be 27. How fun is that? Yeah, we're all 27 again. 27 on the 27th, guys. It's wild. Getting old. Yeah. Just kidding. I remember saying that when I was, well, how long was it? Like 20 years ago? <laughs> it's, yeah, it's just funny being like, oh, 27 seemed old. And it's like, you just keep going though. Like every time you're like, no, I'm old. I'm old now. No, now I'm really old. No, oh no. wait, now I'm really old. Oh yeah, I remember being like, oh my god, I'm almost thirty. And it's like that's just, oh my god. <laughs> and now I'm like, fifties coming up in the <laughs> in the next few stops. <laughs> yeah, like I, it's weird. Like I, sometimes, like watching Dune. I'll use that as a great example. I feel in between his age and his mom's age, (laughs) but it's, and it's weird. I'm like, does that make me like the aunt, the older sister to all everybody in the world? Like, I don't know what I am anymore. Like millennials, we were like the stars our whole lives. And now we're just like Gen X. (laughs) Everybody forgot about us. (laughs) It's It's all the boomers and Gen Z raging against each other. Time is just weird. Uh, time and age, like it's really kind of hard to wrap your head around all of it. It, it really does go so fast. And it's like, I have a hard time just holding on. And it's like, this year is already halfway over. I feel yeah. like it's just begun. And it would just be nice for it to slow down maybe a little bit. Um, because I feel like, the, like dad and mom used to always say, the older you get, the faster it goes. And I thought that was the silliest thing I had ever heard in my life. But it is the truth. <laughs> it is 100% the truth. And it is weird. Yeah. It is very it's like, weird. How the so. hell did we get here? I know. I'm excited. Mom's taking me on a date to Carowinds. And it's going to be the hottest day of the year. <laughs> so, it's Carowinds she's like, fashion. She's like, I'm so sad that Adele's not going to be here. I'm like, I bet Adele is too. I bet she's just real upset about that. <laughs> I mean, I, I do love a theme park, but I do not like the heat. <laughs> <laughs> well, and she won't let me go to, I'm so upset. She will not let me go to the water park. I'm like, really? going to the water she's park? She's not going to your water? She's like, well, she, exactly. And she's like... No, Sarah. You're, she keeps trying to say it's disgusting. I'm gonna like get, get a disease. Yeah, like, mom. No, you just don't want to go to the water park. It's my she birthday. just doesn't want to go. I know. On my birthday, all I want to do is just sit in that lazy river. And mom's like, "That is so nasty." No. Mm, I, I'm kind of with mom there. <laughs> so is Stephen. No one's on my side. It's just people are gross, and then you make them wet. <laughs> They're even grosser. <laughs> I think most people agree with you. But I guess I'm okay being gross. So I'm like, <laughs> how did you learn to listen to mom after 42 years? Of course not. Just listen why, to her. Why would I? But speaking of things you probably shouldn't listen to. Um, okay. <laughs> no, no, this is great. Or shouldn't do, rather. I have some booger news for us. I swear this I is... Scott <laughs> No. No, but <laughs> hey, Mothman Fest is coming up. Mothman Festival 2024, Point Pleasant, West Virginia. That's coming up September 21st through the 22nd. But oh. that's not the story. And that's actually not even my bigger news. It's oh, just a short season cover. Um, <laughs> this is just a fun little thing. Just You're like, to... speaking of carowinds. Speaking of festive stuff and people being silly <laughs> in public. People, okay, so you know there's the, the Mothman statue in Point Pleasant. Um, of course. Because, you know, that's where all the sightings are when we covered Mothman, which, we, you know, if you yes. haven't listened, maybe check out that episode. But apparently people keep... <laughs> people keep putting money in his crack. Like, apparently, Mothman... He, wait, you cut out. They keep putting money in his crack? His butt crack. Okay, we heard you right. <laughs> we did yeah. hear you correctly. Yeah, why? apparently, like, people, they don't know who's doing it or, like, why. I think at one point people were, like, leaving, like, you know, kind of, like, pennies and money, like, make-a-wish kind of stuff. Make-a-wish and money. I don't know. It's crack. But now people are, like, stuffing dollar bills and quarters and the statues crack. Hey. <laughs> I want to know how, 
how thick is this crack? <laughs> well, and then that begs the other question. People are like, why does he have such a, like, realistic butt enough to, for people to be able to stuff things into it? I can't. I can't. Even, humans, I can't with you anymore. So, there's that. And I'm just kind of like, what freaking century are you in? Slide credit. <laughs> But yeah, so apparently people are doing that. So if you're at the festival, check it out. Let us know if maybe they put up a rope around it so people don't do that anymore. But I'm curious. Yeah, imagine they have like caution tape or just like on his ass. Are they going to put boxers on him or something? They're going to have to have like, they're going to have to hire security. It's like they're not vandalizing. They're just legitimately leaving money. And like, Mothman's like a stripper now. Like Apparently. Yeah. <laughs> Who started that and why did it catch on? I have so no idea. Confused. So that that's happening. In but now that you Virginia. told me, I kind of want to put like a penny in his crack. For a wish. Like, oh man, I really need this podcast to make it. <laughs> Every time you put a penny in the Mothman's crack, an angel gets her wings. <laughs> Oh, wow, that's interesting news. <laughs> so, pretty boogery. Um, yeah, but yeah, it wasn't enough for a full story, but I had to mention it. It's not that's the whole mention of stuff I've been seeing all over TikTok this week. That's hilarious. Like, damn it, they did it again. But you know, the real booger news is <laughs> Harvard. Harvard. That's from Harvard. Uh, they this is, this has not been peer reviewed yet, so there's that. But they propose like a bold new theory that aliens probably are already living among us. Yeah, we already need that Harvard. Yeah, so tell us what we don't know. Yeah. Anyway, that that's kind of the the booger news topic I chose today because I've also been seeing a lot of buzz around that, and people are like, "Ooh, Harvard must you know mean something." Harvard, yeah. tell us something we don't know. I thought we thought you were the smart ones. Way to be tardy to the party, nerds. God, I'm I'm a little disappointed in Harvard. <laughs> I, I'm just gonna throw that out there. You're just now realizing that. I mean, yeah. our dad went out west, and like that's the first thing he said that he met a family of aliens. Like, like he could long. just tell. He just knew. He doesn't have a degree from Harvard. He's like, obviously, they've been here. They've been around us. Yeah. It's like, if you can't tell, then you are one. Yes. Okay. So, <laughs> so yes. Um, this is just a summary of Newsweek, but you can find tons of coverage on this topic. Um, but in a groundbreaking news study, a Harvard researcher suggests that extraterrestrial beings may not only have visited Earth, but could also be living among us. Uh, the paper exploring the crypto-terrestrial hypothesis uh, posits... See, they gotta go try to smart it up. I know, right? Posits the unidentified anomalous phenomenon, UAP, commonly known as UFOs. See, they're even being like that. They're trying to steal our words and our, our topics. Just this is stay science. the wall. I mean, what, you know what they did? They heard our episode about Travis and ran with it. They're like, we're just going to throw some big words in here. And we're going to start a theory. They're still in Travis's thunder. And you know what? We're going to tell Travis. Like it. He's going to whoop your ass. Yeah, he is. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, so it posits that UFOs um, are intelligent beings residing in stealth, um, either underground or on the moon, or even blending in with humans. Now, wait, you remember how there was all that uh, talk about these underground cities? Mm hmm. I mean, duh, we already knew this, Harvard. We already yeah, knew this. Yeah, we saw Demolition Man. Like, Where have you been? <laughs> Uh, the researchers propose several intriguing scenarios, including the possibility that these beings are remnants of ancient civilizations, descendants of intelligent dinosaurs, or even time travelers. Uh, despite the outlandish nature of these theories, the authors urge the scientific community to approach the topic with open-mindedness and rigorous. We've been doing that since the beginning of time, asking for science, the science to be studied seriously. So maybe now... They're hearing us. So, there's that. They're trying to crack into our turf. <laughs> crack into it like the Mothman. Yeah, I like what you, I don't know if you meant to do that, but that was awesome. <laughs> That's just the way my brain works. 
<laughs> oh my gosh, Harvard. I mean, I think that's Harvard. phenomenal. Yeah. I mean, I, it's just, intriguing. It's entertaining. It is intriguing. And I'm glad that people, in all seriousness, I am glad that prestigious universities are taking that seriously because, I mean, I think this is always. You know, like we laugh about like these people. They're like, "Oh, I had a UFO sighting," but there is something to it. Like, and it, I think people like Travis in our episode we covered um, have really been pushing for transparency and for the science to be taken more seriously. So hopefully, this is a step in that in the right direction. Uh, well, that's kind of what's going on in the now of <laughs> the booger the booger world of news. Um, but let's look to our astrological forecast, see how this week's going to shake out for us. I mean, this is one of the most important weeks of the year, guys. It's the birth of me. So yeah. I have a feeling it's just going to be amazing. <laughs> yeah. And this comes to you from stylecaster.com. Um, Chat GPT helped me make this actually more like a weather forecast. So this should be pretty fun. <laughs> so- this week, expect a mix of revelations, romantic thunderstorms, and sparks of genius. Hey! hey. <laughs> and even added little icons with like partly cloudy and thunderstorms. Stop it! You've got to post that. That's hilarious. Yeah. Like, here's your seven day forecast. It seriously yeah. made it seem like this. All right, so June 26th, Mercury trine Saturn. Stabilizing breezes bring a cool, realistic outlook. Publications, perfect conditions for making and keeping promises. <laughs> you're right. You're, so, Mom, if you're promising me, promising me the water park, then it's happening. <laughs> but she will not be making that promise. I can guarantee it. <laughs> that's true. Yeah, that's the day before. You gotta, you gotta get her locked. I gotta get her. I gotta lock her in on the twenty sixth. Like, so, can I go to the water park? Can I go to the water park? <laughs> well, I don't know. It, it ends with your ideas will be grounded and solid, but probably not water. <laughs> um, and then June 27th, sun out, fun out, it's Sarah's birthday. Hey! <laughs> sun out, fun out. <laughs> and then coming off of the birthday high, we have June 29th, Venus sextile Mars. So it's a steamy romance with a chance of flirtatious thunderstorms. <laughs> it's ideal weather for love sparks flying. Don't shy away from turning debates into delightful deliances. <laughs> I don't even know what that means. I mean. <laughs> so I guess you might be kind of fiery and flirtatious. I mean, it is going to be hot here. <laughs> I don't know. All right. Um, <laughs> We also have a Saturn retrograde at 19 degrees in Pisces. So foggy conditions with sudden clearings revealing hidden truths. So what does it mean? Watch for hidden enemies and uh, truth and trust shifts. So kind of be on your toes. Uh, The most mutable signs will be Gemini, Virgo, Sagittarius, and Pisces. Um, So they're going to feel this the most intensely. Uh, me and Adele are cool. <laughs> That's right. So it's going to be time for those, especially these people, uh, time to reevaluate who and what you can rely on. So might be some shakiness going on there. Oh, yeah. And we also have a Mercury conjunction in Uran- Uranus. So like oh, no, I think you should say Uranus now, Uranus. especially since we're talking about cracks. Well, Uranus. And we'll bring Uranus, Uranus back. <laughs> Uranus. But yeah, so lightning storms of inspiration. So bright ideas and eureka moments abound. Eureka. (laughs) And uh, here's the weekly wrap up. So so power dynamics. Shifting like clouds after a storm, revealing new patterns and structures. We have some reality checks. Expect a few downpours of truth clearing the air. (laughs) And new foundations. Perfect weather for planting the seeds of new beginnings. Oh. And finally, romantic and creative energy. A blend of sun and storm creating rainbows of potential. Oh, Adele, you know what I've only made that a thousand times better? If you were on a green screen and had... I know. <laughs> that That'll be the next step. But that was 
so creative. Oh my god. <laughs> oh, and then I love this little finish. Stay tuned to the stars and don't forget your cosmic umbrella. <laughs> back that to you awesome. that was awesome oh you know i loved it so much i, I had fun with that <laughs> i will make sure that the cosmic umbrella is packed and ready to go this week <laughs> <laughs> that was great that was too much fun all right that was too much fun like i feel like thanks adele like now, now bring in the chills with some spooky stories i cannot believe we have not covered this, Adele. And I was so surprised we hadn't covered this that I even went back to our media guide to be like, did I just forget that we covered this? But we have not. Do you have any ideas, like, whatsoever? It's a ghost, right? <clears throat> it's a Yeah, it's a ghost. Hmm. But a famous ghost, I'm assuming. A famous place you would find a ghost. Gettysburg. No. Oh, Oh, well, we should cover that one, too. <laughs> then I don't yeah, know. Yeah, we should probably cover that one, too. Yeah. We could do, um, like, a, a Battlefield miniseries. A Battlefield. <laughs> All right, are you ready for this one, guys? Yeah, who is it going to be? The Winchester Mystery House. Oh, I thought we covered this, too. I don't, but maybe it was just, like, a, a side. I thought we covered it. And if we have covered it, we're covering it again. I didn't yeah. feel God. But I don't remember making art for it. <laughs> yeah, I, I double checked the media guys. I'm like, I know we've covered this, but when I started reading about it, I'm like, I don't think we, we have not covered this, or at least not um, in great detail. All right. Yeah. So it. if we've recovered, if we had, this is going to be part two. Um, and th I'm going to tell you, like, I want to go here. This is a, this is on the list because this place is so crazy and so cool. Uh, but first, I want to thank my by sources here i also had a conversation with chatbot gdp uh winchestermysteryhouse.com mentalfloss.com vanityfair.com and of course my friends at reddit so in case you aren't familiar with winchester mystery house so this is a very historic place and it's located in san jose california and it's known for its architectural oddities okay so this is the craziest construction ever. So you have not only like staircases that lead to nowhere, you have like closets that open to walls. You have passageways through different things. You ha it's just crazy. But, but not only that, it's also home to a lot of ghosts. And um and it's also it, it's just we have to go there so i'm just going to give you just not a huge history but i'm just going to give you a quick rundown of the history okay so the owner also a sarah with an h and you know we're extra a uh, sarah's and this sarah winchester is no um she was extra herself <laughs> and so sarah was a widow uh, a young widow her husband william winchester which yes winchester is a winchester firearms that's how they made their fortune um so she not only was she a widow um she also had a baby that passed away that was only just a couple weeks old so she's like tragedy after tragedy here and so um so she's kind of had a really rough go of life here um so Sarah actually believed the reason for what happened to her was because, um, and like her activity she had with ghosts was because of all the souls that were taken at the hands of the rifles, the Winchester rifles. Um, and so she basically is known for making this home where laborers worked 24 hours a day, seven days a week, because she was trying to escape from ghosts that were chasing her. So that's why the construction of the home is so crazy. Um, and so this is the crazy. I never knew this part. So um, so she, of course, like, you know, we're in the age of her. So her husband died in 1881 of, of course, tuberculosis. And so we're also like right here at the height of spiritualism too, right? Because we've talked about how a lot of people are dying, a lot of sad circumstances. So, of course, what does she do? she gets a medium because she's like i 
you know, I'm a widow and my baby's dead. I literally have no one. Like, what is going on? I don't know what to do. So during a seance, her deceased husband comes to her and says that the money that they had is blood money from the, like the blood of all the people that have died of their rifles. The ghosts are coming back to haunt them. And she needs to move from like, they were like from Connecticut or somewhere like that. She needed to move herself and keep herself safe from ghosts. So she wow. moves and creates the Winchester mystery home. Like when your dead husband comes to you, at a seance and tells you that you are being haunted and all this stuff has happened because of what your money has done to people, you might tend to be a little scared and maybe heed that warning, you know? Mm -hmm. And so let's just talk about really quick just the architectural features. Uh, so this mansion was seven stories high, okay? And now remember, it's just her. Like, she has no family. So this thing was seven stories high, but in 1906, a San Francisco earthquake reduced it to only four, only four stories. This house has 160 rooms, 40 bedrooms, two bathrooms, 47 fireplaces, and over 10,000 panes of glass. It has 17 chimneys and two basements. And the house is famous for all the quirks that we talked about earlier. So literally staircases that just end. Um, they have doors that open into walls, windows that look into another room. And then she has a, her own seance room because she does seances all the time. So she has a whole room just dedicated to seances. So it's like this house already has like a widow, somebody that a, a mother that's grieving. And she's already been told by her late husband in a seance that all these ghosts are after her. So there's already haunting energy in itself. <laughs> and so yeah. there's a lot happening here. So you can actually, like, through the years, there have been several hauntings here. Um, our friends Ghost Adventures have been there. Pretty much all the paranormal channels have been there. Um, but there are three types of stories and um, ghosts that are said to reside here today. Um, so the first, um, so let's see. So apparently there's like super long hallways too. And so they basically break down like three types of entities that people have experienced there. And so the first is intelligent hauntings, okay? So remember, an intelligent haunting is going to be an interaction where a ghost, someone from the past, interacts with someone from the present. And they may be known like to communicate, like, you know, like maybe like you feel a touch or something moves or maybe you, you know you see them or something so there have been a lot of intellectual uh, intellect intelligent hauntings here there also have been a lot of residual hauntings now a residual haunting is whenever you see a ghost or you know doing the same thing over and over again like you maybe you see them like you know walking back and forth in the hallway or something and they're just kind of doing the same like they're stuck on a loop yeah, like um, and then action or awareness of exactly and so and then the last one and this is adele's favorite kind of haunting there are a lot of shadow figures happening here lots of reports of that so you have um and you know if you've ever experienced that which i haven't um it's basically it looks like a shadow of the living but it's not it's not it, it's like dark and dark. It's, it's like a, a lot. It's yeah. like a void of a person. A void of a yes. That's a good good way to put it. Um, but there have been no reported evidence of poltergeist, which is a good thing because poltergeists are the worst. They um, typically damage people, property. They're typically the entities that you know we have to send priests in. <laughs> it was the demon possessions. So no one has really reported any like bad activity just there is activity but no one has reported feeling threats or harm to themselves so that's a good thing if you go so let's uh let's get into some of these uh some of these ghosts so um of course a lot of folks including sarah herself who lived here believed that the house was completely haunted by those that were killed by winchester rifles and she ha had just like she felt like she and even staff throughout the years 
said that they have reported that as well. Like just have seen one of these three things happen. And so you're going to be so amazed to know, Adele, your favorite person came here, Houdini. <laughs> Houdini oh. even came here in 1924 because let's think about it. Here's a widow, like, and we'll talk about this more. Like, could she have had somebody tell her something that's not true? And so then she starts making her life like this. So this this is something Houdini would eat up, you know, and be outraged. And so Houdini has been there to try to debunk spiritualism and just all of the things that these people have told her um and it's also uh, i think i told you earlier like zach has covered it zach bagans has covered it uh the psychic sylvia brown has been there and um just several other people have come to do like lockdowns and stuff um so they also do ghost tours here and so so many people have experienced things on the ghost tour and the most famous ghost there is Clyde and they call him the wheelbarrow ghost and there's actually a picture of Clyde if you go on the Winchester Mystery House website of him alive like what he looked like and then there's also footage of what he looks like in the afterlife and so he is reported to basically just push a wheelbarrow back and forth and he has been seen working in the basement He's been seen pushing the wheelbarrow through the gardens. And he was thought to be one of the laborers, like I said, of the house. And you can see his picture. And um, I have a few stories about Clyde. So one of the workers that currently, I don't think they still work there, but they're a modern, more modern day worker. Um, he kind of took care of maintenance and his name is Denny. And so he was a maintenance worker at Winchester and he was out in the morning and he heard footsteps and he was like oh this is not a place where tourists need to be and so of course he's like hey like can't be here you gotta go back to the house or whatever and he just kept on trying to follow the footsteps and then he could never find anybody he's like he just knows it was he just had that feeling that it was Clyde mm -hmm. um and then also um people have seen Clyde like shadows of Clyde um, just kind of out and about he's one that has been um, he's probably they say one of the most active that people see and have seen so it's like he's constantly on a loop like working um, another um, ghost they say that Sarah is still there in the house and um, some of the folks say that she's been captured they think it's her like they were taking a picture of the outside of the house and it looked like a shadow of her in a window in a room that is off limits so some say that that could be Sarah um, some say that they have seen her walking in the hallways in a dark dress um, I mean, and then she's still alive in there and just lost She's like, I can't get out of this house. <laughs> I'm going to try to get out of here for 80 years. <laughs> um, one of the biggest spots in the house, uh, hot spots, is the seance room. Um, and so people that have gone there say that they have reported like really eerie presences in the room and a lot of unexplained noises. And then there have also been just a lot of reports of servants, like people wearing like on a period correct servant attire moving about their duties like you know in and out of the kitchen and now the you know stuff they've seen that a lot um uh, but i also want to talk to you about reddit because um some folks turned to reddit after their visit to the winchester mystery house to report what they uh what they found so we're gonna start with and this is so cool all right so there's also a place in this house that's referred to as the witch's cap so it's like if you're standing in the rain and you look straight up at the ceiling, they made it where it looks like you're inside of a witch's hat. That's so cool. kind of spooky, kind of cool. But they used it just as like storage space. It was never like used that anybody knows of as like the seance room or a room. It was just a space, a weird space. So this writer writes, uh, this is Life in SJ and it is the winchester mystery house is haunted on a whole different level here we go life in sj writes this was taken about five minutes after we toured the witch's cap they said the witch's cap is better at contacting spirits because of the conical shape i guess 
traps them. So they're saying like that shape of the hat like traps the spirits maybe. Okay. And so they said they went into um, the next room down a small hallway and heard footsteps creaking behind the group. So SJ was at the very back and she kind of like she or he looked back and they didn't see another tour coming up behind them or anybody coming up behind them and um, they went they kind of looked down the hall and they saw the woman in black which we think to be Sarah um, with a long with long black hair walking down the hallway towards the witch's cap and they said the footsteps stopped as she passed the hallway and then um, so she frantically, like the apparition, like frantically looked over to see that there were people that could see her, and she like passed as fast as she could, like by them, like. Hmm. So after SJ talked to the tour guide, and the tour guide said, um, "They're like, was there like a tour behind us? Are there people working here?" And the tour guide was like, no, there are, there's not. Like, we're the last people. And um, she's like, because I know that, like, somebody, like, I felt somebody walk. I heard steps, and I felt, like, this presence of somebody walking past me. And, you know, like, I'm pretty sure it's not a ghost, right? And they were like, um, there's nothing. You know, no one did anything. And so they're just convinced that it was Sarah that passed them. And then she took a picture of the house, if you can go on, and I'll, maybe I'll post it too, but um, SJ took a picture of the house, and uh, and it takes you like through like, the attic, the basement, and um, she didn't think she had captured anything, so there's somewhere I captured anything, and apparently she did capture something, so she does it, it looks almost like um, something in like the pane of the window but it's just like it was weird so they so she's like did i capture something maybe i did Did i experienced something not sure but regardless it's pretty spooky you know yeah so yeah so that's sj's account um all right now now this one was only five months ago this person went out so this is very recent um and so this one is help winchester mystery house did i see a ghost <laughs> so wise grad grad owl uh writes i went on a tour of the winchester mystery house today since i'm visiting the bay area the tour was relatively simple and nothing started sticking out of the ordinary but when we were in the kitchen near the stove i turned my head to the left and saw someone walking it was a middle-aged mad. I think I meant to say man. Uh, I hope so. <laughs> With a slight bald patch. He had a white shirt and what looked like to be an apron. His back was towards me and he seemed to be carrying a heavy tray based on the way he was walking. There was a split second because he was went by so fast. His clothes looked old, and then I asked the tour guide if they had caterers working in the kitchen or surrounding areas, and she said no. And I asked the person next to me if she saw what the same thing, and she said no. Did I happen to see a ghost? Ooh. <laughs> Maybe. See, I, I hope so, or you're starting to see things, because <laughs> there's also that. I, I hope it was that. a ghost. I hope for your sake, um, wise grad owl, that it was a ghost. So yeah, uh, so a lot of people have had, you know, things happen to them um, there. And, and it does, like, it seems to be like a lot of the of the, the haunting seems to be like in a loop. Mm -hmm. You know, like you have a lot of people like doing the same thing over and over and over again so that seems to be like the most how most of the sightings are which i think makes sense you know because there was a lot of work going on there for so many uh years um and so so yeah i mean a lot of people have had a lot of just experiences and then there's also um let me go back to my notes here so this mansion, you know, we've, I think most people have heard of it, but it has inspired a no, like tons of books and TV shows. And it also remains um, a popular destination for those interested in the paranormal and just architectural oddities. Um, you can 
obviously go there today. They do a daytime and a nighttime tour. And um, they also just did a, a movie in 2018 where um, it, but it looks really good. Like um, Helen uh, Marion got to play Sarah Winchester. And so she was interviewed with uh, Vanity Fair. And Vanity Fair's like, do you believe in ghosts and all this stuff? And Helen said that she felt um, that Sarah was haunted um, by something very benign. And she says that she um, felt sort of a great sweetness when she was there in the house, not horror. Like, she definitely felt something. Oh, she said it was like, maybe sweet. it's the baby. Maybe. And she said, there is a sweetness in it. And it's, ha it's if it's haunted at all, it's definitely haunted by something sweet. She didn't feel... And, and that's what it seems like. No one has reported any horror type yeah, of feeling, like there's whatsoever. No entity there. Yes. Um, also, something I wanted to talk about here, uh, just like as we kind of get into it, um, about Sarah and Houdini. <laughs> so Sarah also, like, so she would have seances about seance room. They say almost daily. But after she would have her seance, she would have new plans to give to the people to construct this house. Like, the spirit said this, the spirit said that. So, this kind of opens up the whole Houdini debate of, do we think that Sarah was mad? Do we think that they're truly, like, these spirits were truly coming after her? Or do we think that she was driven bad by spirits, like, false spiritualists that were telling her these things profiting off of her and then she's making these plans in this house or like was it some kind of ponzi scheme where she was also victimized again it kind of brings those questions to light you know um because obviously you have a and then i think and, and, and helen talks about this a lot too you have 1800s you have a woman who's a widow very very wealthy has lost a child and of course people were so quick there to go oh she's just woman hysteria she's just hysterical did people was she like did was she truly mad or was she a victim of these people taking advantage of her i think that raises some interesting questions about sarah winchester and about the house and the architecture and and, and whatnot so i don't know what you guys think about it um i mean i think there could definitely be some residual hauntings there just because i mean it seems like there's just so many like encounters with that but as far as sarah herself i feel like she is that victim that houdini really tried to save um i think she could have really like you you have just lost someone you love two people that you love and someone uh, tells you that ghosts are after you like of course like what are you gonna do like do well, you think she was yeah. driven mad what do you think adele i don't know it's kind of interesting we were just watching a documentary uh, I think it's called Tell Them You Love Me. But it's it's essentially about people with disabilities. Like this young man had cerebral palsy. So we didn't have a lot of mobile to type on his own. And then it's his whole story. But anyway, the question became, is are those his thoughts he's typing? Or are you helping him typing make you type what you want him to say? Oh, and I think it's one of those things. Like, I... I'd be curious what kind of seances she was having. If it was the Ouija board, I would say it's probably her. If it was somebody else giving her this information, I think they were probably capitalizing on her paranoia. Yeah. Personally. I don't know. I think it's odd that people... I think initially I was like, she's either she's probably either haunted or insane. And it's all her, yeah. but for people to say they're having weird experiences in the house after her passing, that's kind of odd. Yeah. I don't exactly. know. I don't, I don't know. know. And either, either way, I think the house architecturally is just amazing. Even if you're not into the spooky, I think there's something for everybody to go check out. Yeah, like, even if you just want to see some crazy architecture, like you don't even care about the paranormal stuff, like it is wild. And it is huge. Like, I, like, you know, I'm used to seeing, like, that one little, p the famous picture of the Winchester, but, like, when, um, I went in, like, doing my research, like, I got to see, like, an aerial view, and, like, literally, when you see how huge this, it's, like, a huge compound, 
and you realize it's just her like she's one person so can you imagine just how spooky that would be and, and they said that she was so terrified that she would never sleep in the same room so she remember she had 140 bedrooms and so she would go through walls and different things to get try to get safe and then she would go back through another wall and the back here because she really thought that those people were at those apparitions were after her yeah, and to me, to me, this just sounds like true paranoid delusions. Yeah. And it, it sounds like, like someone mentally ill having someone feed into their delusional thinking. Yes. Like, you tell, like, can you imagine, so like, already being a grieving person and someone telling you, like, this, you know, your husband, like, coming back to you and saying. They're going to get you, bitch. Like, yeah, they're what? basically they're basically coming after you to keep yourself safe. Like. Like, yeah. even if you're the most sane person that would do something to you psychologically like oh shit but to like build like, onto the house like i that's the thing where i'm like i don't really understand the motivation of the person in telling her to do this because they're not necessarily making money off of that other well, than well maybe because you know she's got to pay for the construction and what if like you're like the friends with the person? people are like keep her talking so we continually have jobs and then we'll put you in on a cut that's what i'm thinking like we'll give you a cut but she's gonna have to get paid for this she probably has to pay somebody to do the seances and then if they get in with these contractors or the people working you keep them working seven days a week 24 hours a day for years and years and years and years that's like guarantee like here's other plans here's more plans here's more plans money 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 because, I mean, they knew she was an heiress to this great fortune. So, they knew she had bukus of money. Well, so, if they could make her paranoid. I think it's safe to say that no matter what, people were going to try to take advantage of her. <laughs> yeah. Because yeah, that's just sure. a true story, I right? I bad for her. Like, I don't know. Like, it, it really does seem very delusional and almost even OCD. Like, I, I really think it's psychological stuff going on with her. But... That still begs the question of how, why are people having paranormal activity today? Yeah. See, I think that's separate. Or it's like, maybe she's, maybe it's her. Maybe she caused it to be, like, made it haunted because of her. Like, I don't know. Yeah, her energy. I don't know, but I would love to tour it at least at a moment oh, and investigate. I want to better. go tour it so bad. I want to go on one of the ghost tours. And I just want to just, hey, like, go there because it's just, it's crazy crazy like i want to like experience these little passageways and all i want to go to the witch's cap yeah it seems like a wild like fantastic place i know well it's so funny guys before we started the podcast adele and i you know chat like we love to do and adele is gonna be 40 in a few years and she's like i really want to go somewhere and i was like just wait until you hear about this story because i'm like we can go to winchester yeah maybe we could do a few places wouldn't that be cool it's been on my bucket list me too we could maybe bring our equipment we do a lockdown i wonder if i email them now we get lost (laughs) the two of us dude (laughs) i know i'd get lost like crazy is they would have to send a search party for me yeah, I'm like, Adele, Adele. I found a new room. They didn't know it was here somehow. I would be at this episode of Murder, She Wrote, where she gets trapped in, like, this Irish cellar and, like, has to, like, try to survive on a Werther's original until they find her. <laughs> that would be some passageway that no one knew about with, like, a mint. <laughs> try to survive until you guys found me in Winchester history. <laughs> That's how I go. There we go. And, and then I'll hold it. I'll hang out with Clyde. They're I'll all like, just trying to leave, but can't. Like, Will you push me in the wheelbarrow? <laughs> I'm just, just like, oh my god. We're just trying to find our door to the next We're life. We're really we keep... trying to get out of here. <laughs> we can't figure it out. <laughs> oh, sh- see, that's the shit I worry about with the afterlife. It's like every, like, you know, people just pass so beautifully and they're in the afterlife and it's like this beautiful Dolores Cannon experience. My ass is going to be stuck in fucking Winchester mystery, mystery house. I'm like, I can't get out. Like, the, it's locked. Hello? 
Hello. <laughs> my door's locked. Hi, <laughs> <Yeah>. like guys. <laughs> yeah. Had this problem, and then it's like <laughs> later on, whoever's next dies, and you're like, "What are you doing here?" Like my door <laughs> won't open. Can I go through yours? <laughs> and then Clyde's like, "No, I've been here for a hundred years. You're not going anywhere. <laughs> I'm here pushing this damn wheelbarrow. Might as well just find a chore." That's what I started doing. I yeah. started gardening. I pick, pick a hobby, okay? <laughs> yeah, those are those are the thoughts I have about the afterlife. They're legit. I mean, I'm like, please don't be like Beetlejuice or like <laughs> stuck in a waiting room waiting for my number to be called. <laughs> yeah, seriously. Maybe so, it's yeah, the holding the cell. Yeah, that is the Winchester Mystery House. And I think it's hella cool. And I really want to go there. And I'm so glad that they pre have preserved it and made it, you know, um, a place where you can go. And um, you can have events there. Like, what a cool place to have a wedding. I mean, yeah. That'd be amazing. I'd love to have a wedding. Or Adele, there. you could have your 40th birthday there. Like, that would be we'll great. We'll just have, like, some Bojangles and some barbecue in, the, in some random spot. No, like oh we we reserved this room yeah where are the witch's cat you're we not supposed three this years ago tour but do you want a chicken wing and then when you realize it's it's sarah it's like do you, did it's that sarah. lady want a bow box what lady you want a biscuit <laughs> was that oh, lady? it there was a ghost and all of a sudden well adele what are we going to cover next question is what are we but what aren't we gonna cover oh oh just kidding um i don't know i said we spin that wheel let me figure out how to share my screen first i think it's number two okay you see that wheel yeah i see it all right oh i see travis sees have been added i did add travis All right, I got lore. Yeah, which usually I always get, so I'm so glad you finally get a lore. Yeah, so that'll be a fun one to do uh, next show. Yes. Oh, there it is. I was like, where's my stop share? There and we I go. Was like, Where are you? I was like, Geez. and guys, the next time I see you, I'll be a year older and wiser. Isn't that crazy? And uh, I will, actually, um, well, it's kind of family. funny because you're always a year older than you were. No matter what day it is, you're a year older uh, than you were that day last year. That hurts. <laughs> just pour some salt on that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying, because time is all relevant. Anyway, yay, happy birthday. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> you're like, you're one step closer to being a ghost. That, there's that to look forward there's to. There's that. Later. I'm going to be somebody too class. exhausting. <laughs> <laughs> well, i don't know if i had to push a wheelbarrow in the afterlife i'm gonna be i'm gonna be mad as hell oh. i'm gonna tell you right now i'm not doing manual labor in the afterlife i'm not, not doing shit i'm not doing anything clyde i'm not doing it i'm not doing no. a damn thing for a good thousand years i'm so tired <laughs> by this last this last trip didn't me in y'all <laughs> tired i'm gonna need a break for a good thousand years of everybody just leave me the fuck alone then you can we'll talk about sending me back i don't know i think i'm just gonna come back as an advisor i think i'm just not guide. going to I, I might sign up for the spirit guide but i don't know if i want to do i don't want to play anymore <laughs> like, no. you can't make me do it like make me <laughs> oh adele's coming back as a poltergeist <laughs> she's mad as hell that that could be a little i'll come back as that <laughs> I'll come back as an entity. <laughs> like Adele, I knew that was you. Fine. Do you want to be a demon for a year? <laughs> um, Fine. Sign me up. Okay. <laughs> Can I still be a vegetarian? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh gosh. Well, guys, thank you for listening to our episode on the Winchester Mystery House. And if you've been. Tell us if you've had an experience. Did you see something? Did you experience yeah. something? We want to know. Did you get lost? Did you Show get us lost? your pictures. Yeah. Give us some advice. How long did it take? Were you in there for freaking ever? Like, yeah. Give us some deets. 
Do they have snacks? <laughs> yeah, please tell me they but, have snack breaks. Are there snacks on the premises, or do we need to bring our own? Yeah, like, we want to know. Yeah. We need to know these things. And as we say here on Stormy Willow, stay safe out there, guys. Stay curious. And never trust stairs that lead to nowhere. That's true. That's very true. Just don't use the stairs. Don't. It's, it's just too stairs. much effort anyway. It's like the 2000s. We don't need stairs. <laughs> Bye, you guys. Later, taters.